Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Got a question here on the email from Marcus. Marcus writes in, he says, Hi Matt, I should have written earlier, but here goes. Uh, back to the should have written earlier point. The headline is entitled, Emergency. Urgent advice needed, purchase tomorrow morning. I'm not sure I've made your deadline, but I'm going to answer your question for you anyways, because you have an interesting question here. I should have written earlier, but here goes. I really would appreciate your advice. I currently have a Fuji X-Pro2 and a host of lenses, big and wonderful, and also an original Mark I Sony RX100. Here's the problem. The Fuji is so good that I now never use the Sony. But I am going away on a snowboarding trip to Austria in around a couple of weeks, and I don't want to take the Fuji kit as it's simply too big, expensive, and heavy to take on the slopes. I need something small and light and com controllable. So I've been doing my research, and I have a short list of two cameras that will give me the easy-to-access manual control I yearn for, but don't get with the Sony ARX100 and also the benefit of 4K video. The two contenders are both Panasonic, the very pocketable LX10, LX15 here in England, and the other camera is the LX100, which is a bit more of a lump but appears to have a hell of a lens. At the moment, both cameras are on sale for around L400 for the LX100 or L428 for the LX10, LX15 in, in, in those parts. A point of detail is the lack of ND filters. The LX100 can take a 43 millimeter screw mount, but the LX1015 will have to resort to higher shutter speeds and bright conditions. But does this even matter? Will anyone notice the faster shutter speed on video? I think what I really want to know is how the image quality will compare. Do they both have great lenses? So any advice you can give me would be hugely appreciated. I thought this may be a good one for your show as these two cameras are close. Oh, just to let you know, the Sony RX100 Mark IV is currently L670 in the UK, so way more expensive, and I wasn't impressed by the fiddly EVF, and I like an aperture ring, so hence my short list. But hey, you may have some other ideas. The camera will be used for scenery, portraits, time-lapse, video, macro, the lot. Very, very much hope you can help. P.S. Huge fan. I love your show and the passion of your arguments. If you want to see any of my photos, I am the Max Sinclair on Instagram. Keep up the excellent work, Marcus. Well, thanks for your question, Marcus. Quite a well-thought-out, uh, well-written-out question here. And before I answer it, let me grab one of those cameras. Okay, so this is... One of your options, the Panasonic LX10, or in your neck of the world, it is the LX15. So Europe, I believe, is this is where they're labeling that, the LX15. I'm not sure why. But um, this is one of my favorite all-time cameras. And the reason for this is that this thing is so amazing in the sense of the lens is so sharp, and it's an F4 lens, it has a decent zoom range. Um, it's got manual controls. It's got a full flip-up screen. I use it a lot for doing run-and-gun video. Um, and I use it a lot just to have in my pocket to supplement photos and things. Um, and the quality on this guy is amazing. I've said it before. I'll say it again. The one-inch sensors that we're getting out of new cameras like this LX10 these days uh, are outperforming early 6 megapixel APS-C sensors like we used to have in, say, the Nikon D100 or the old Canon uh, 10D, I think even the 20D. That might have gone to an 8. But these guys, 20 megapixel, 1-inch, uh, extremely good sensor. This is what I would go with. Um, that's my choice just because I love this thing. Everything about it has enough goodness that, like I said, it's one of my favorite cameras, period, of all time. I just really love this thing. And I would take it over the LX100. As you know, I have owned the LX100, and it's a beautiful little camera, but this is smaller and lighter, more pocketable, and it does better 4K in the sense of it has an F1.4 lens, and I believe the limitations are less on this for the, for the timing. But I just the fact that it's smaller and lighter, I mean, this is a very small, pocketable camera in comparison to the LX100. So that would be my choice right there. That's what I would go with. I love this little guy. I use it a lot, and uh, I'd be lost without it. So I'm going to throw it back to the audience, though. Would you go with an LX100 over an LX10? And why? Is it because of the little bit larger sensor? Keep in mind that all else is not equal here. Yes, the LX100 has a larger micro four-thirds sensor, but it's older. So this LX10's newer, smaller sensor is probably much closer to on par with the older Micro Four Thirds sensor in the LX100. I'm not saying it actually beats the LX100, but they're getting pretty close because the tech in these new one-inch smaller sensors is amazing. Plus, it's more megapixels and the pocketability. You just, it all just rounds it out for me. But what about you guys? What would you guys do? Would you go with an LX10 or an LX15 in Europe uh, over an LX100? Or would you go with an LX100? 
Let us know what you would do and why. Leave it in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Let's help out Marcus here. Um, we want to help him out, make his decision, and i um, interested to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks for your question, Marcus. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at rtheimage.com.